Welcome back, everyone, for today. Uh, number one, do not forget you should submit your assignment, uh, the sprint three, uh, March 30. So next week is the due date for your assignment. Do not forget to submit. Specifically, you need to submit the same thing that you have submitted for the previous two assignments. Uh, backlog, burden chart, retrospective and review, your product, source code, and probably most important than ever, your class diagram. Previously, your class diagram, your design have been an extra thing, something that we have been asking you to do is to move forward to this point in which the design is as important as the source code, as important as the product, and we're going to talk about that, why. So your assignment next week, hopefully you are already working on that. Please, any question, do not hesitate to ask. If you have questions about your stories, if you have questions about your class diagram, your source code, Java doc, I don't know, anything, please send us an email to me, to the TAs, ask the question. It is better to ask the questions before the due date than submit appeals after. So due date, your assignment, work with your team. Now, moving forward, regarding the class diagram, regarding your designs. Previous week, we review what should be the structure of your class diagrams, even though you maybe are not expert in design, you are not expert in UML, at least now you have a clear idea about your classes, which one should have methods and attributes mandatory, which one can be used a box, and the three connections that you need to use. The three arrows, arrowheads, the lines that you can use, and therefore you have an idea, if you, it's a good idea to use PowerPoint, or if the editor that you are using is really something that will help you to create these UML diagrams or not. So moving forward, previous lecture, I was showing you this diagram. We were talking about, well, things that you can review, even if you are not expert in design. We agree that this diagram looks like, well, it needs some refactoring. Hard to know if everything here is correct. However, things that smell, things that are red lights that could point out that something could not be exactly correct is when you discover a loop in the main, when you discover these arrows going out and in to the, to the main class. Uh, we talk about this idea of, well, that arrow is telling me that some other class menu is going to be calling methods in main. And the only methods in main are the constructor and the public static void main. Uh, something is missing. Probably there are methods in the class main frame that are not listed. That is an option, the method that is being called. Probably the direction of the arrow is not correct. If you draw the diagram manually, I don't know, but something could be wrong there. And those kind of cases are the cases that the TAs, the graders, they are going to review. Uh, we start with the main, we review things around, we move forward. And when we notice something that do not make sense, well, uh, you cannot know, just look into the diagram that something is wrong. 100% sure, but you have an idea that something is suspicious. And when something is suspicious, you go and review the source code to see what is happening. We talk about this, so hopefully the ideas here are clear. Uh, other diagrams that I want to share with you and ideas that I want you to have are the following. Uh, this diagram, what do you think about this diagram? Any comment about the diagram ideas, uh, thoughts? If you're reviewing the diagram, what do you think?
Something is missing. What? According with the rules, the things that I am asking you to do in your projects, all your classes, any class that you are creating, include attributes and methods. Yeah, I agree with that. So please, the first thing that you are going to lost points here, if this is your diagram, obviously I am using diagrams from the spring one. Hopefully this team in the spring two do something better and for the spring three, it's going to be even better. So just to be sure, a diagram like this, you're going to lose points because methods and attributes are missing in your classes. For the menu, for the menu bar, for the table pane, for the frame, all that, they are okay. They can be used boxes, no problem. But the methods that correspond to your project, starting with this one, the main, they should have the methods and the attributes. Be sure to review that before you submit. Uh, moreover, any other thing here? besides the fact that methods and attributes are missing. Nothing. What do you think about those lines that I use highlight with red? What is the meaning of a line without a narrow head? It is possible to have these lines without arrow head going from the main to the libraries. Good. So thank you. Uh, if you're reading the chat, most of the answers are public to everyone. Yeah, be careful with that. Remember, the line without the arrowhead, be directional. That is tricky. It's a line. You do not have arrowhead. You are not using arrows, however the meaning is. There are arrows in both uh, parts. So the main is calling a method in those libraries, but according with the diagram, the same is going to happen in the opposite direction, which is not true, not in all the cases. So in most of these lines, probably in all of them, uh, the connection is unidirectional and the connection probably should be that like that. Again, uh, hard to know, but 99% the arrow should be pointing to the libraries. Very easy things, guys. Uh, attributes and methods, review the lines and the arrows. Very simple. But these things, the graders are going to be taking off points for this. So instead of sending an appeal later, professor, I lost a lot of points for a simple error because I missed an arrowhead. What about put the arrowhead? So you receive full points. You do not lose points. You do not send an appeal later. Very simple. Just do it. Put these things, review these things in the submission that you're going to do. Very trivial. Moving forward, another diagram that I want to share with you. Uh, what do you think about the thing in the red rectangle? It is fine. There is an error. There is something there telling you what is happening here. That is a very good definition. It's kind of odd. Again, hard to know if 
this is an error in the diagram, if this is really the source code, uh, probably the names are not helping. It's difficult to establish a decision used with the diagram. I am sure that the TAs and the graders are going to review this deeper, but the diagram is not clean. The design is smelling. It's like telling you there is something suspicious here. If you think about it, what this diagram is telling you is there is a relationship between the menu and, and something like save, compile, and load, which from the beginning is save is an action and, and the action should be maybe a method, but do we really need a class for save? Do we really need a class for compile? Do we really need a class for load? Again, those are actions, methods. Maybe they could be in the same class, in one class. Having those classes with those names that correspond to methods, this is very, very suspicious. Moreover, when you connect those with inheritance and the inheritance happen with something that is called menu, menu bar, you will review the source code. The TAs will do it. But this is a big red light. And hopefully it is for all of you as an engineers. You review this and Hopefully you can figure out that the relationship between the menu bar and the options in the menu bar uh, is not inheritance. Probably the error is because the arrowhead, probably you want to use an arrowhead that is different, but also the direction, who is using what? The menu item, the menu bar, the menu, uh, something is not exactly working. Moreover, if you think about the menu in editing from the frame, again, several different things can be happening. Uh, number one could be an error with the name. Maybe menu bar is not really menu bar, but something more like the main that is in editing from the frame, which is the principal class. But then the question is why the other classes that are more like the actions are using inheritance. Immediately, probably what you could think here is well, the inheritance relationship is not exactly the one that you want to use. Maybe you do not know about the inheritance or you do not know about which one is the correct arrow. All this, a big question mark. And similar thing is going to happen with all the inheritance below. Again, a TA, a grader is going to review this. And the first thing that he's going to do is go and review your source code. Now, something that I want to share with you is what if this is your diagram and this is your source code? Uh, what do you think is going to happen here? I have this class diagram from one team. But when I go and try to read the source code, it seems that the source code is something like this. So what I really have is like only one file. Okay, that file have probably inner classes or something like that. Best case scenario, I have this icon and I have the frame. So I have two classes, really. That is the submission. However, I have this class diagram, which obviously is not the class diagram for the system, which obviously uh, all this inheritance and all this inheritance probably is not happening. So in a scenario like this for your spring tree, I just want to be clear, the grade for this, what the TAs and the graders are going to do is this do not make any sense. Again, we are reviewing that your class diagram and your source code match. Your source code should compile, but the class diagram that you submit should match with that. 
That is the reason because we review the relationships. We want to be sure that you can put in a class diagram the same relationship that you are implementing. And why I am insisting on this? Because again, you have time to ask questions, to be sure that what you are doing is correct. Uh, no appeals, please. Moving forward, uh, what do you think about this diagram? Use a first look. Yeah. Uh, things that I am asking you to review your diagrams, just like open your diagram and be sure that you have attributes and methods. Be sure that you are using the correct arrow for the relationship that you want to showcase. Moreover, be sure that everything that you are showing is connected somehow with something else. When you submit a diagram, if you have something, uh, one class, maybe this one, and it's not connected with anything, the message is that class do not need to be in the project. No one is using the class. No one is taking advantage of whatever method or variable is there. Usually, we are going to start reading your diagram. You should start reading your diagram, searching for the class in which you have the main method. And when you have that class, the class with the main, the next step is that class is going to be connected with something. And that something is going to be connected with more and more and more. And somehow it should be a path from the main to everything else, right? Because your program starts with the main and somehow the main start calling the actions. And if you have one class at the end and there is something in that class, somehow the action there is going to be triggered by the user in some of the classes that are connected and they exist because in the main, an object from those classes was created. In this scenario, there are several connection missing. The most important, probably, I have this rectangle here. That rectangle is showing me the main method there, a static, uh, probably the icon is telling me that it's public, but the main is not connected with anything. There is any chance in which the main is not connected with anything, and hopefully you agree with me, the main should be connected. Uh, scenario number one, you have global variables. If you have global variables in this class, the class frame, there are going to be some kind of DM on here. If you do not have global variables, uh, that guy probably is going to have inheritance, at least from JFrame. Worst case scenario, if the only thing that you have is local variable, the only thing that you are creating is local variables to call things, local panels, local menu, local everything. From the main, you're going to have arrows going out. One of those three should be in the main, should be connected the main. If your main is not connected, like this example, something is missing cannot happen. Uh, here, if you're going to use any kind of class from the libraries, again, you do not need to put the methods and the attributes. It's just not needed. But if I have here a workspace, if this workspace is going to be somehow on the screen, that workspace somehow directly or indirectly is going to be connected with the main. Directly because there are a line between them, some line. 
indirectly because the main is connected with another class, which is connected with this class, or the main is connected with panel, and panel is the panel of this one. Somehow, a connection. That is the third thing that I am recommending you to review in your class diagrams. At least review those three things. At least submit a class diagram that is better than the examples that I have shared with you. They are not all the examples, not all the diagrams that you submit, but at least diagrams that help me to insist in those three things, connections, attributes, methods, and your arrowheads. Good. Uh, one last thing that I want to share, and again, this is a diagram from the spring one. Probably you were working your solution and probably the diagram for the spring two is totally different from this one. So is not an evaluation, but just using the picture to give you a recommendation in case you still have something like this, not only for this team, but for everyone. Uh, what do you think about this diagram? In particular, something that I want you to notice in this diagram is that I have a class here and there is some inheritance to another class here and there is some inheritance to several other classes, including this one here. There is also inheritance to this class here, which also have inheritance to other classes here. So at least is child, 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 not one. Um, what do you think of inheritance like this? Any idea? Good, bad, you don't care. Okay, recommendation. Using inheritance is great. It's a very powerful element in object-oriented programming. Inheritance is the key that allows to work with polymorphic behaviors. Inheritance is great. However, one thing that you need to be careful and yeah, will be a little bit dangerous if we want to use that word is the levels of inheritance. How deep is your inheritance? Uh, one parent, one child, trivial having childs to the child, three levels, kind of common. Moving forward from that, moving forward from one level, two levels, uh, whatever things go down, could be dangerous, could be not a good idea. And I am using this could be because there is not a magic number about how many levels are good or bad. My comment here, my recommendation, when you have more than these three levels of inheritance, ask yourselves, do I really need more? Probably the answer is yes. I need more. I need 10, 20 levels. If you can justify that, you as a team, you as a developer, go ahead. But ask yourselves. Because sometimes the, the answer could be like, well, maybe not. Maybe I can do this with less levels. One of the metrics that we're going to review that we use to review the quality of our source code and the quality of our designs is how many levels do you have of inheritance? Because higher the number, uh, higher the risk of problems. And we're going to talk about the problems. But my point right now is be careful with how many levels of inheritance you are using in your particular solution. Uh, I am pointing this one, and the first thing that is going to happen with the graders with me is, okay, one, two, three, four, I, it's more than three. I need to review this. 
I need to take a look. I need to validate that really do we need that level of deep. Uh, help me. What I notice is, well, I have this class that is inheriting from this class. And this is the content of the class. Okay, I review one, I review the content, I move forward. Uh, I have another class, this class, uh, the parent of this one, and I check, and um, this is the content. A question, an open question. Uh, again, probably what I am reading is the source code of the version one, and probably the version two is totally different. So probably this was used the draft of the source code, the draft of the cloud diagram. That is a possibility, good. However, if this is not a draft and a recommendation for everyone, if this is your final version, if you have so many levels of inheritance and then you review the source code and for one reason or another, you have something like this, uh, one variable, a couple of methods, one is a getter, the other is calling super and is doing something with an ID that basically is receiving a value. And I have this one that is the parent. And this one, the parent, is well, it have a variable at the top, a constructor that is empty, two methods that basically are calling methods here. Do you think that these two classes could be one? By any chance, that could be a possibility? Again, probably they evolve for the second version, but for this version in particular, uh, could it be that these two could somehow become one and therefore eliminate one level in the inheritance. I am asking the question and probably the answer is well, yes, or you could tell me, you know what? No, because these other classes do not need something that I am adding in this class for the things below. Open question. In your final version, when you have something like this, ask yourselves, do I really need this parent and this child or they can be just one class and therefore eliminate one level? No magic numbers, but things that you need to think about. Good. So moving forward, one more. If you review the diagram, and in particular, again, the red rectangle, after everything that I have mentioned, can you identify the problem? There is a problem. Disconnect. Yeah. Uh, again, the main should be connected with things panels, listeners, observers, whatever. That main is kind of alone. And if you continue exploring, well, these guys here are kind of disconnected. So looks like the controller. The controller should be connected with the view and moreover should be connected with the actions. Somehow uh, something is missing. Anyway. Just review your classes, your diagrams. What do you think about this one? And probably you cannot read the text. It's very, very small. But just guessing, do you think that this diagram represents the full system? 
do you think that this diagram or well, a diagram like this is complete and is representing what you are doing as a project? Again, this was a spring one. So do you think that this represent what you did spring one, spring two, the project that you developed, the base for what you are doing right now? And hopefully asking yourself that you can answer like, probably this diagram is missing something. Probably you do not have the answer about what is missing. Probably it's just like, I am looking to the diagram and the definition is basically this, there is a smell in the design. It's like something do not look good. Something do not seems to be complete. Sometimes it's hard to define why, but it's just like there are elements missing. There are connections missing or there are connections that do not look correct. Very subjective. Something that you are going to be able to detect with the experience. However, the experience help, but there are ways to review if a diagram is good or not. And I want to talk about that, about the numbers. Metrics to check if you design can be improved or is used okay. The metrics, for the metrics, we assume that all the elements are there, the classes, and all the connections that you are doing in the software are represented in the diagram. So we assume that the diagram is complete and with a complete diagram, we can do an analysis, a numeric analysis to check if that design and therefore the source code that is equivalent is correct or not. This diagram in particular, this diagram looks like it's not complete. Uh, things are missing considering your project. So the numbers can show me that there are opportunities to improve, but those numbers are going to show me those opportunities only in the things that I am showing here, not in the things that I didn't add. So my first step, my first request for you, and the three numbers that I mentioned before is please create diagrams that are complete. Be sure that everything is in your diagram because my goal is use your diagrams to review some numbers. The things that we're going to review today and the next lecture, we're going to use those techniques with your diagrams in your sprint tree and check if your design is good or there are areas of opportunity. Which are those metrics? Moving forward, dependency metrics. I agree with that. Uh, reading the comment in the chat, uh, that analysis, yeah, I agree with that. That is some uh, feedback for the diagram. Uh, again, for everyone, if you have any question regarding your diagrams, the ones that you're going to submit, please, before the due date, ask. You can send an email to me, to the TAs, ask before you submit. That is good, uh, appeals later, nothing happened. Anyway, we have a diagram and we want to know if that diagram is good or bad. Obviously, the experience with the time, you are going to be able to check that in the same way that you are able to detect error in source code. More practice, more experience, you develop that skill. However, numbers. Always, 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 we need numbers. Ways to prove that our evaluation is objective, not subjective, right? So dependency metrics. Uh, what if I ask you for your uh, using your experience, which design is better, A or B? We already talked about this before a little bit, but A or B. If we assume that both solutions can be done for the same problem, which one is better? Why? 
I agree with the chat. P is better. Why? Yes. B represent the solution in a picture in which the coupling is low. Why? Because what I am representing in B is one class that is using other classes. Uh, looks like creating objects from other classes. In A, what I am representing is a class that have global variable objects from other classes. And moreover, because of the connection with the diamond in black, the new is in the constructor or outside of the class. And what I am telling here in the option A is this class here cannot exist if I do not have the other classes, if I am not able to create the other objects. What I am telling in the option A is that if you want to test this software, in the option A, in order to test this one, you need the other three. All these four together are one unit and they need to be tested together. The coupling is not low. The other option, just because in the other option, what we have is number one, local variables. The variables are local. And we know that because of the arrows. And when you have local variables, you can inject dependencies. When you have local variables, they are in a method. You can pass as a parameter the values for those variables. Dependency injection. Use one scenario. If I use dependency injection, that is a good thing for the low coupling. Obviously, I am giving you all this explanation, but the easy answer is this arrow is better than this arrow, period. All the explanation is something that you already know. Local versus global. Dependency injection versus passing of parameters in the constructor. Anyway. But we need proofs of these numbers. We will have it. This one. Is a good design or not? Similar to the previous one. Um, I eliminate the names and I eliminate the methods and the attributes. But if you saw a diagram like this, is a good design or you need to refactor? Factor. Uh, why? What is the element that is telling you uh, something is not exactly good? Too many diamonds, right? Something that we talk, the diamonds. The diamonds are not low coupling. The diamonds are very, very special. Uh, you should try to avoid diamonds. A diamond between two classes is something that is going to create a high dependency. When you check a diagram and basically everything is diamonds, 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 something is going to crash. Something is going to fail. Basically, what you are telling me with this diagram is that every single class here have global variables that are from any other of the classes here. Moreover, if you're going to do testing, well, in order to test this box here, you need these boxes here. Oops, but in order to test that one, you need this other one here. All these need to be tested like one unit. And if you are thinking about testing this one, well, this one is going to need this one, but also is going to need that one. The independency is highly compromised.
not exactly a good idea. But again, we will need numbers to prove that. So far, we are using only our experience, our intuition. This is not exactly good. Anyway, let's talk about packages. Uh, something that we haven't done, but it's something that you're going to do in your next sprint is we need to put classes in packages. It's a good idea to organize our classes in packages. Uh, good news, the packages, uh, these folders, they have relationships also. Moreover, uh, you can still connect packages with inheritance, using composition, aggregation, etc. Not because that exists between the packages, but the idea is that that exists between one class in this package as another class in this one. If they are inheritance between them, you can represent that there is inheritance, one inheritance between some elements here and some elements here. And the representation is going to be like, well, this connection of inheritance between the two packages is not like one package is the parent and the other package is the child, but it's more like one class in that package is a parent and one class in the other package is a child from that one. So you will notice the relationship of inheritance between the packages that basically represent one element there with one element there. So two options. If I show you option A and option B, and in option A, we have inheritance between this package and other packages, a relationship of dependency between two packages, a relationship of dependency with these ones, inheritance, dependency, inheritance, dependency. There is any way to know which of these two options is better than the other? What could be better to have this X using Y, which is using this three, and this one is the father of this one, or something like B that looks like more crazy. <laughs> yep, uh, B is going to be better. Uh, B is going to be better. Yeah. Uh, this guy there is going to be like, for those of you familiar with the pattern, it's going to be like a bridge. This connection there and that package AC is helping to improve the separation of concerns. It's helping to improve the design. If you're familiar with software design, if you're familiar with patterns, uh, you can say, yes, it's obvious. I have that experience. What happened if not? We can use metrics, numbers, that are going to tell us that this design is better than the other. They are solving the same problem, but this one, even if I have one more element, is a better solution than having a small number of elements just because of the connections. Option number one, you are experts in software design, you get experience, and therefore you create good diagrams. And with good diagrams, good source code, they are connected. Option number two, if you are expert in software design, yeah, great, that is good. But even if not, you can measure things in a diagram. And those measures, those numbers are going to tell you if that design and therefore the code that is equivalent is good or can be improved. With experience, without experience, the numbers can be calculated by anyone and those numbers are going to help you to know if the design and therefore the code is good or have opportunities for improvement. And that is something that we're going to do with your projects. Step number one, I need to present to introduce the numbers, the metrics. And I ask you about these three cases because what I am going to ask you later is, can you use the numbers, the metrics, 
those things that we review to go back here and here and here and prove with numbers what we are just assuming with experience right now, that is something that we're going to do. So we agree with the answers. Basically, BB are the options, the numbers, the numbers and the reason for the numbers. I am going to present to you some metrics and how to calculate them. And what those metrics are going to help us to detect is these five things. When you have a diagram, what you can detect in your diagrams and things that you're going to be able to fix, hopefully, is one, two, three, four, five. And I need to be sure that we understand those five names. Uh, something that is rigid or stability or be rigid. Those two words are going to be related with something that is hard to change. Something that if you modify, it's going to have a lot of implications. Hard to change. Fragile. Fragile is the fancy name for something that can break the system. Uh, two different things. You know what? I have this class. This class is the class that have everything inside. This class have the main method, and this is a main method with 100, 1,000 lines of code. This class is rigid. This class is stable. This class is very hard to modify because there are 1,000 lines of code inside. Another class. This one, uh, it could be very simple, like the classes that I showed you before, a class with one method or two methods, you change something. And the problem is going to happen not in this class. This class looks like easy to change. I change something. But this one is going to make something in another class, in another part of the system to break. The concept for that is fragile. The problem is not that it's difficult to change. The problem is, I do not know what I am doing, that just changing this five for a six, and the program do not compile. Something that I am uh, worried about it, some of the solutions that you submit for the Spring 2 looks like could be fried. And that is the reason because in your sprint tree, I am asking you for modifications. I want you to fix fragility or I want you to face the fragility problems. I remove this panel that was the point of connection and something is going to break. Hopefully not, but it, yes, your work is to fix it, right? Immobility. This is about reuse. Can I reuse parts of your projects? By any chance, can I reuse your workspaces or your panels or your drag and drop to drag and drop something else? Can I take one of your classes and use that class just like that without modifying the source code, reusing a different project? And I want to be clear here, when we talk about reuse, it's not about copy paste. When we talk about reuse in software, we are not talking about in Java, reuse the Java code. That is not reuse, that is copy paste. Reuse is that I can take the class, something that I do not need to change, your dot class file, and that one using another system. That is really reuse. The other is copy paste. 
So how easy or how hard is that another team take one of your dot class files, any of them or one of them and put in their own project and that work. Mobility, more, if I can do that, if I can do the reuse, if I can move one of your classes to a different project or no mobility, if I cannot do that. Yeah, uh, importing that counts as a reuse. Uh, that is exactly the definition here. That is the reason because I mentioned the dot class. When you do the import, when you import packages, when you are importing is not the source code. You are not copy pasting the source code in your project. Those imports is the dot class. Because if you review, when you import something, you are importing a jar file, for instance, a library. And the content of the jar file is the dot class, the compiled code, the byte codes, if we're talking about Java. So that is exactly reuse, importing packages, importing libraries. Yeah. So that counts in a positive way for mobility. Uh, it's mobile. This, if you're creating a library, that library can move from one project to another. Yeah. So uh, another thing that I am worried about your project, viscosity. When I review your class diagrams, something that is easy to detect in the class diagrams is like, maybe, maybe the solution that you are presenting is harder than it should be. This is very common, guys. People do this because I want to show that I am a good engineer. So I want to show all the complex things that I can implement. I want to show that I can create 100, 200 classes. Sometimes the project needs only two or three. Sometimes you only need a small, simple solution. But we want to show more than that. And what we do is to create a solution that is working, is solving the problem, but it's a solution that is harder than it should be. Moreover, sometimes uh, we do not understand the problem. And sometimes what we do is use go and create a solution, maybe doing a prototype and another prototype and another prototype and wait, this prototype is working. That one do not have a design. That one we do not have an idea about all the lines that we're using, but do not move, it's working. The definition for that usually is this idea of, well, you have a solution, yeah, but the level of viscosity is like, the word is more or less about this idea of one version, another version, another version, another version, the patch. And in some point you get something that is working but extensibility, maintainability, and so on, the qualities of the software are low. Wondering what is going to happen with the Spring 3, but this is the risk that is there. My main concern with your next version. Anyway, opacity. Uh, we have been talking about readability, well, the opposite, opacity. If you have something that is hard to read, starting from the diagram and then with the code is something that have a high level of opacity. How do we avoid this? How do we fight with this? How do we detect this file? Easy. We have three things to review. Three things. These three things to detect these five problems, qualities or anti-qualities, whatever you want to read. Three things. You know what? Uh, we are going to do this, this, and this. Concerns that we're going to review. Number one, loops. 
Number two, we need to measure stability. Number three, we need to measure to measure abstraction. Abstraction, stability, and loops, three things. Where we're going to measure that? In the diagrams. In the diagrams. Which diagrams? The classes and the packages. Whatever you have. You have classes, good. You have packages, your system is a little bit bigger, good. We're going to measure the loops, the cycles. We're going to measure the stability. That one is going to be particularly important. And we're going to measure the abstraction. And measuring those things, we're going to get some numbers and those numbers are connected, related with these five things. And all of them are potential flaws of the design with fancy names. Uh, they are problems. Okay, so three numbers to measure, good. What we need to do? Number one, loops. Loops. You have a class there, you have a package there. And the first thing that you're going to do is to forget about the classes or the package. You don't care if you have a class, you don't care if you have a folder, they are going to be used nodes. It's a class, good. It's a package, good. I don't care. They are nodes. Nodes like this node or this node or this node. Yeah, they are classes. I don't care. Two, connections. Uh, we know that we have inheritance. We know that we have this diamond thing. We know that we have this dependency thing. I don't care. All of these are going to become use edges. And the only thing that I care is about the direction. The direction, all of this, the arrowhead is giving me the direction edges and what I am going to create with these nodes and these edges is a graph, a graph that is equivalent to my class diagram or to my package diagram. All these connections here, they are maybe inheritance, they are maybe association or composition or aggregation, we don't care. It's just nodes and connections, connections with a particular direction. Problem number one, I am going to count how many loops do I have? Loops, yeah, loops like when an arrow go in this direction and I have an arrow in the opposite direction, you can notice there is a loop between this node and this node. So that is one loop. And well, there is another loop here, another loop. Oh, looks like there is another loop here. Just because the direction of the arrows. I have three loops in that particular diagram. If you think about those nodes as classes and all those classes are in the same package, in this package, I have a total of three loops. We need to count how many loops do we have in our packages. Yeah, everything. What do you think? If I am counting how many loops do I have, what could be better? A number of loops that is high or a number of loops that is low? Loops. There is not a magic number, not for this one. For the others, it's going to be. 
for the loops. There is not a magic number. The only thing that happened here is we are going to know how many loops do we have and it should be possible to explain why the loop exists. Uh, classical examples. If I have one class and that one class is having a child and that child is having some kind of relationship like this one, that is a pattern. Do I have a loop there? Yes or no? And hopefully everyone agree. If we think about the class and the other class, I have a connection in that direction, the inheritance, and the other one, if you remember, is a connection in that direction. I need to be clear, that one is not a loop. There are two lines that connect those two nodes, but they are not creating a loop. There is not a circular connection. Not really. Uh, when we're doing this, we forget about the meaning of the things. Uh, for instance, if you have a class, think about you have this class and I don't know, this is a class course and this course have students. Uh, when you have a student here, and you want to represent that you have several, let's start with 50. Usually what you're going to do is something like this. Now, the other option, the other option is you have course and maybe you want to use a list and that is what you have. Uh, there is not really a connection with the student because your list already is a collection of objects. And what is going to happen at the end is that even though you have objects, well, student is an object. So you can have a student just because the list, the data structure, the collection is this uh, polymorphic. So in all these cases, uh, you're going to have connection like that. So you do not need to think about the objects, but you are thinking about the classes. And when you transform this to a graph, what we really have is basically this one is one node, this diamond, I don't care about the diamond, it's going to become just a connection with another class done. This number, I don't care, it's two nodes and they are connected. This one, something similar. I have the course. Uh, this is an arrow that is connecting with another node that maybe this one somehow is going to be connected with another node, nothing else. If you have a connection between course and the particular element, because there is a use of the element, again, you have this arrow here, not because it's association, but just because it's, there is a connection there. And again, if we check the direction, there is not a loop. We don't care about the arrows, but the directions of the arrow should create this idea of a circle. I am not asking for the multiplicity in the diagram for your project. So uh, that is something that is a good idea, but it's not something that mandatory I am asking you to do. I think that the only, there is a couple of references, maybe two or three in which you are going to have multiplicity, uh, the collection of the edges and the collection of the uh, icons. Those are maybe the two that I can think right now that you're going to need that and the collection of working spaces, workspaces. So three points in a big diagram in which you need multiplicity, nothing uh, particularly relevant. If you can include it, good. If not, it's fine. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like that. So, uh, I have, well, that one is what happened here inside of the list. 
I mean, this one is the one that have a node, right? That is what you are pointing. So this one that is the one that have a node is the one that is going to have this relationship in particular, uh, because I have one of the nodes and that's it. This one, the one that is using the list is the one that is going to be using this one. And this one calling the method next is going to have access to maybe another one that is connected with this one. Uh, this object or the node probably is going to have this cyclic relationship for the node that have a node, but that's it. I mean, your connections are going to be line, line, and in some point maybe the loop here, that is basically the class with the class. That's it. Good. So how many loops? And obviously the connection of the class with the same class, that is also one loop. So if I have here this node that is connected with itself, like could be the case of node, is one loop is going to come like one and the others. How many loops do we have? between our classes or between our packages. And that metric is going to have a name. Done. The definition, the easy explanation is count the loops. Uh, the fancy name, the tangled metric. Good news, there are tools that you can use tools that you provide your source code and the tool is going to return to you this magic number. The tool is going to tell you how many loops do you have. Source code, the graph, and just counting the loops. With this number, obviously your goal is number one, to identify the loops and try to eliminate the loops. Best case scenario, tangle metric zero, no loops. If you have one, two, three, four, can you justify that loop? If yes, good. If not, maybe something to refactor. Ah, that one was easy. Thank you. Next one. Let's talk about abstraction and let's talk about stability. Two concepts. Uh, I am going to give you the definitions so you can be sure to understand the concept. We can talk about the numbers later. Definition, number one, abstraction. If we're talking about a class, two options. If the class is abstract or an interface, the abstraction metric is going to be one. If I give you one abstract class, if I give you one interface and I ask you for the abstraction metric of that class, of that interface, the value is one, period. On the opposite, if I ask you for the abstraction metric of any class that is not abstract and is not an interface, for any class that is not abstract or interface, the abstraction is going to be zero. For classes, it's very simple, one or zero. What happens if I have a package, a project like yours, and in your project, maybe you have one class that is abstract, and that one is going to have two kids, and the two kids are concrete classes. What do you think is going to be the abstraction metric for a package, for that package, for instance. That package have three classes. One class is abstract and the other two are not abstract. So yes, 0.33. What is the equation to calculate the abstraction of a package?
how many do I have that are abstract? One. What is the total? Three. 3.33. Abstraction of a package, that equation. Abstraction of a class. Abstraction of an interface or an abstract class. Abstraction, easy. The other one, and I am going to move. Stability. Stability. As we mentioned before, stability gives you an idea if a class or a package is easy to change or hard to change. If you can modify the class or modify the package without risking the system or not. Obviously, that is very, very subjective. Like, well, uh, is easy to change or not? Uh, we can argue about different factors. Someone have this idea of, you know what? Let's define a measure of easy or hard to change. And that measure is going to be one equation. And that one equation is going to be this equation. Stability is going to be equal to the number of outputs of the class or the package divided by the total. Let's see, uh, what if I have a class and that class have a child and this child is using methods from another class and probably is using methods from another class and probably is going to have an element from another class. A, B, C, D, E. And my question for you guys is, if you notice this diagram, do you think that C is easy to change or hard to change? Hard, why hard? I agree with you, the answer is correct. You, I am asking why to establish the circumstances. A lot of classes depend on that one. That is exactly the definition. It's like, you know what? That C is going to be a problem because if I touch C, A, B, E, and D, can crash. And you know that because of your experience. You notice that in the diagram. However, if we go for the numbers, uh, the equation, how many outputs do I have? How many outputs going in the class C? Outputs, yeah, how many lines go out? Well, this one go out. I don't care that this inheritance or not. This one go out. This one go out, this one go out. Okay, I have one, two, three, four outs. How many input plus output? How many lines in total? Four. This is equal to one. If this equation gives you one, that class is very hard to change. And the definition for that, instability equal one. The opposite, the opposite is going to be an instability of zero. An instability of zero. Uh, stable. Now, help me. If I change C, if I delete a method, if I delete a variable, if I do whatever you want with the C, and 
there is a developer working here, a developer working here, a developer working here, a developer working here, and obviously someone working with C. If I change something with C, I am going to have problems or not? If I change something with C and you are using my class C, you are going to have problems? Who is going to have the problems? The owner of C or the others? The problem is for the others, right? Yes or no? Number one, this case. That number one is telling you not that you, the owners, cannot modify the C. That one is telling you, modify C or not, your choice. But that one is the level of problems that you're going to cause. That one is your choice if you modify your class. But one means that there is a lot of people that is going to have problems with that. You are going to crush others, not you. And we need to talk more about it, but this one is the red light for others. So it's not about me. And no, changing this is very simple. The problem is, yeah, it could be simple for you, but others are going to suffer the consequences. Yeah, that is the other metric. Uh, I am going to suffer if someone change B or A or D. Imagine that I am using D and I am using a method there and someone just delete that method. That is going to be a problem for me when something changed in the class that I am using. The importance of the lines and the direction of the lines. Anyway, I am going to stop here. Next lecture, we continue talking about the stability and abstraction, and we need to move forward to this plot and to explain the combination of that stability and abstraction and how we detect if our source code, our diagram is good or bad. Good. So I stop here. Please do not forget your assignment. Any question, send us an email. Thank you.